either of them will sort of mix that up a little bit in the mirror when they both got access to yeah, the same so tools. Yeah, so we're get, doing a button check, right? Are we not? Did they do the button check already? Yeah, they wow. just did the button check. So slick. Yeah, we're going to be doing game one on to town and city here. And I agree 100% that they had different play styles. And not only that, they kind of evolved. It's like watching two organisms find their niche in, in like in the Galapagos Islands. As you know, they kind of realize what their strengths are going to be and they end up playing to it. I love how you made this all like so sophisticated as two Robs just <laughs> mash down tilt at each other. Um, Listen, uh, nature finds a way. <laughs> exactly. Listen, nature is all about the most effective way to do things and got to go with what works. Oh yeah, no, but they're, <laughs> they're just trading up airs. Back and forth right now. This, oh! Nice. That is an interesting thing about this, right? Is that Rob, uh, a lot of the aerials are sort of parry bait. Oh! <laughs> that was pretty good. That, listen, that was pretty slick. Mm -hmm. And that puts Dill at a lead. And this is the sort of thing where Rob with the lead, especially against Rob, who, despite being a great character, the approach options, eh, not necessarily the greatest. So as we're seeing, Dill just kind of playing this, hoping to get some chip damage in, and every little bit of damage matters, but it's only going to be about 7% as Zomba manages to take that stock. Mm -hmm. And I like what we saw from Zomba there. The gyro was in play, went for the down tilt on that one, actually flinched because of the gyro, which allowed the pressure to continue, but if that hadn't worked, that would have potentially ended the down tilt a little earlier and got him out of trouble. Yeah, I'm liking the way that so you see that Zomba's oh the aggression, the constant pressure, and it feels like the way that Dill is trying to play around it, it was micro spacing. Oh man. If that had connected, that would have absolutely been the death of Dill. I like how there's a little bit of the threat of the side B on that one, but Zomba just staying a little bit back and recovering high. Although this is the thing, both of them have decent juggling tools, but they're not the best at landing from on high, as we're seeing right here. Yeah, but one thing is that back air does cause a lot of displacement, so when done higher up, it can help with the landing, but the risk is if the opponent reads it, speaking of reads. That's the second forward smash kill that Dill has gotten. Granted, the first one was more, uh, like, you know, guaranteed, but nonetheless, the fact that She's taking stocks with these hard-hitting moves that, you know, for the most part, end, you know, even a Rob life pretty early. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a pretty confident read at that, too. We had the uh, tech chase on that one immediately facing on the other side. It was super slick. And now look at this. This is this is that lead being played to before Zombo was able to even it up really quickly. Not so this time around. Already 97% knocked onto him. And it feels like at any instance he might just go, but... An excellent threaten on that one. It rolls behind on that one to threaten the throw and then chases the jump away as the defensive option. A really good call out. And yeah, at this point, Zumba down by quite a bit. Dill seems to be in real control, but bits of chip damage here and there. The only problem is Rob has a you know a decent amount of ways to set up for a kill. Oh, and we're probably <laughs> going to be seeing Dill go for some of those. But the question is whether you know she can actually land them because it seems like Zumba is starting to get chip damage, and once they're both at kill percent, then it you know percentage doesn't really matter. Oh, that'll but do it. No. no! Oh, heavy boy! Town and city coming in clutch. And this is that landing issue you had talked about. No, no way. No, actually. Oh, no, okay, okay. okay, okay. That right. almost did it right there. And one more of those side Vs off the side of the stage will absolutely end Dill. Mm -hmm. Really good move forward by uh, Dill on that one. Getting close and shielding and having uh, uh, access to the forward air out of shield is a really strong punish tool. Oh, Back throw is going to be some nice damage, but here's the thing. Yeah, Dill had a nice percentage lead, but okay, this will do it. Yeah, that nice. throw absolutely right. going to be taking it. I do want town and city. I do want to also call attention to the recovery option you saw right there. The point blank gyro actually has a lot of really cool things going for it. On shield, the gyro just disappears. So that means on shield, there's no gyro there for Zomba to work with and potentially uh, put pressure on Dill. On hit, the gyro will be there to further cover the recovery. Really smart decision on that one. It's a little risky because, of course, if the opponent throws out a hitbox, there's a solid chance you're eating that. But uh, a lot of reward off of that. And once you get the move out, it does have a uh, little risk attached to it. Yeah. No, but honestly, Dill played really well that game. And the big thing is that she was getting these early stocks, things like, you know, just those forward smashes. Uh, 
and with that, eventually found a lead that you know that she could really play to. The thing is, though, you saw that when she couldn't Look get at one how of those. Clean yeah, that was that so was, that was dude. immediate. Just no reaction there. Just 100% intuition. Knowing oh yeah, was you're, happening. you're rolling in. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the thing is, when when Dill isn't taking those stocks early with forward smash reads and that sort of thing, we saw it took him to like 190 with an up throw. So. Yep, there is uh, a little bit of a difficulty with Robin in terms of kill confirms once we get to that higher mid percent. Obviously, there's things like we saw uh, a little bit later, Zomba converting off the late hit nair into the side B and things like that. But there's not oh. too much of that to speak of, and you got to get close to box with Rob, and then Rob has to deal with the good out of shield options and fair and nair. And I will say, for one, Dill's recoveries and the overall disadvantage. Uh, you know, I was about to compliment it, but then she got carried from one side of that town to the other and eventually taken off the top right there. Zomba completely turning around this game. No shades of what had happened just a moment ago in game one because this is dominant. Mm -hmm. This is really good right now. We're actually seeing Zomba uh, getting the landing hitbox on the Nair, converting it into pressure and feels <laughs> dead. That's another dead. This is gone. Yep, this is a very sudden turnaround on this one. Zamba got a lot of the momentum and a lot of the pressure. Actually seeing a little bit of caution from him on this one, not going in super hard. Looking for the yeah. Z-drop conversion. <laughs> I mean, I think that at this point he has enough of a lead that even that didn't kill. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe if she had shifted more to the right? I was just thinking the that, same it, thing, yeah. But, there yeah. was a little shift over to the left on that one, perhaps part of uh, hit confirming it since it wasn't confirmed Would into. Would have gone the other way if she had gone to the right? Uh, no, so it, that always shoots the way you're facing. Think of like uh, Pikachu down smash but in the air. <laughs> oh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pikachu down smash in the air, except it reflects projectiles. Oof. A little batting around in the neutral on this one. This is the thing, right, is that these forward airs, even though they're quite quick and not super punishable, they are commitments into the other space, and that leaves them open for a counter poke. Especially because we've already seen taking, you know, going into the air in and of itself, a little bit of a risk. Like, see, there it is right there. Yeah. And, you know, for the most part, Dill's micro spacing around that forward air has been really good. And look at how many of them that she's getting. But the issue is, forward air's not going to kill, especially when it's like eight times staled. Up air. Oh, oh falls out. That I must, don't know. That, that must have been, been SDI. I was going to say, I. Uh, <laughs> going over to the next game. That's fair. Dill, Dill died when the up air first hit connect. <laughs> and it was just like, I'm. I'm not, no. No. <laughs> uh, this is not those sort of, like, I had life breathed back into me. I'm just, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, that was more like uh, you got an extra hour on time before they cut the cord. But I think there is something to be said for that. Obviously, you know, if you get uh, salty and carry that over into another game, that's something. But there is something to be said for conserving mental energy. Um, and in a situation like that where you're two stocks down, mathematically, you've got a really difficult road to climb at best. Um... See, so. but instead of just going into the blast zone, you should just taunt in place like five times and force your <laughs> opponent to run up and s smash attack you while you're taunting. Maybe. That gives them the satisfaction that you get to whap them in the next game. Well, it's a, but in a way, you, you take control. You know, there's the, there's the sort of like, you know, oh, you know, take control of your own destiny by throwing yourself into the blast zone. <laughs> but then it, there's also a method, you know, a means of control to just taunt in place and force your opponent to say, you have to kill me taunting here. I, I come, I fall upon my sword. <laughs> Well, regardless of where the sword will fall in this game, we're going into game three, the last one for both players. This is to knock them down and to move on to, I believe, winner's semis in now? Or is winner's it? finals. Winner's we're already finals. in winner's semis. And I, I believe the last time these two fought, it was Zomba, who was the victor. I don't know if Dill, maybe uh, Devin could help back up here, whether Dill has taken a set from Zomba this season. No post-pandemic sets for Dill, so that would be really big for her if she manages to do it. Mm -hmm. But look at this already. Zomba starting off pretty dang well. Yeah, but we, the ball is definitely in her court on this one because the game one was quite strong, but then we saw the adaptation from Zomba. So it's all on Dill now to sort of serve that back and come back swinging. Now, already, I feel like there has been some counter adaptation. The disadvantage not nearly as bad as it was in that game two. Oh, and grabbing the gyro. Oh, Actually those down the pressure. With the gyro, with the up tilt. That's interesting. Oh! Right. Yeah, that gyro on the way down, knowing that there was that extra pressure. Oh, my God. Oh. 
the commitment, the stock right there. Honestly, that was beautiful. And those are the kind of early kills that Dill can absolutely turn into a massive lead. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot in these past two games, uh, Zomba sort of mixing up, going down to the ground on that one. We haven't seen a chase, especially that high really from Dill yet. So repping it now and getting the stock to the trouble in a game three, good place to pull it out as any. Oh. And now we're at the point where more and more damage, those forward airs which weren't killing in game two are now just talking, tacking on solid damage. Zomba being, oh, Zomba with a little bit of stage control here and the late back air, it's not going to actually be enough to take out Dill. Yeah. That down smash though, really good option. Uh, Zomba, uh, sorry, Dill hadn't really shown that air dodge to ledge, but still ready for it. it Zomba managing to get the stock even. Yeah, it was, a, it was a limited sort of situation to be in. Rocket Fuel sort of dwindling on that one and going high to make it known that, oh, there's a couple of options here because if Dill had gone low, then she would only have Rocket back up. But um, very difficult Ooh. situation to be there. There's only so much you can mix up in that scenario. Oh, I, I love the gyro right there. I thought there. that was going to be a conversion off the gyro. Some crazy game. All right. Oh, this is, yeah, this is before Dill kind of struggled with it, finding a way to actually end the stock. And now, despite the massive lead that Dill had, it's slowly being taken away as now they're both deep in the red here. Any one of them could die at any instant, mm -hmm. you know, with the proper conversion. We're seeing a lot of stage control by Zomba on this one. Dill just hasn't been able to land back to center stage in like 30 seconds or more. Oh, that Nair finally giving it to her. But for how long? Oh, trapped at the ledge once more, to looking for these confirms, and it's more and more damage put on Tadell. That neutral oh. actually does it. Shoot, I thought that was going to be survived for sure, but very good on Zomba, just putting out the pressure on this one. There's so many hitboxes to get around, and Rob's resources, despite being very good on recovery, are limited. You can't recover forever. Yeah, look at this Zomba doing a lot of this sort of holding shield. And I mean, it's a good option. Rob, you know, despite having a really good grab at this point, probably not, you know, could get a decent amount off of it. But the fact that, you know, his range is so, so tiny, uh, it can make it hard to get that actual grab in the first place. Yep. And we're seeing so many options from Zomba here just uh, fake out, space out a little bit, stuff where there might be uh, conversions on the table that are more guaranteed damage stuff, like going for the juggle, just go for the back air, it's safe, go away, tossing out gyro, all these options because of the lead with all this extra credit. There's no need to put yourself at a great risk. Second although you will get... time that's happened. Yeah, caught yet again. And with that, we now do have one stock apiece, but dilled down by quite a bit here. Oh, might be some big damage though. Only about 33%, but it could grow. That particular exchange after the first forward air on that one, Zomba knew that the forward air could potentially be chased afterwards. Uh, backed up a little bit, did a forward air, and Dill was trying to go for the counter poke. Nothing for either player, but they're very aware of the advantage stage of these characters at this point. <gasps> oh, that up smash, a little bit too hungry, and Dill spaced around it beautifully. That's going to be way off stage. Zomba now forced to recover. We saw earlier this was something he was kind of struggling with, but right now Dill ends up being put at the ledge once more. Right, little toss of gyro, carry the laser. Oh Ooh, no, no not like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's any actual conversions to kill off of that at that point. But, but it's still tons of damage. And now both of them deep in the red here. Those neutral air sending so far away. The point at which neutral air will kill will be a massive sort of, you know, crux oh, point. No. Can he tech it? No, that's gonna be the set. Zomba almost getting the comeback done on him. You know, Dill almost managing to do it. But unfortunately for her, uh, just keeping his head in the game and Zomba eventually scouting out that fight. This was a beautiful stock, by the way. Look yeah, that was this. a lot of really good damage on that one uh, with the gyro. Oh, we threw the gyro up there too. Did the gyro actually confirm? Can we go back here? I don't know that the gyro confirmed on that one. She definitely chased it up. But... Yeah, I, I mean, still catches the, still using this gyro here. Okay, let's maybe pause it. No, it was a back air. Yeah, yeah, back air to move a little bit closer towards center stage, it looks like. I don't know that that would have been a punish on the end lag of the back air, but it was definitely a tough place to be, even if you fall well, through actually, that. Well, actually, maybe we can go back and take a look at it even closer, because I am still half I'm still half convinced that, uh, that that gyro might have landed. Because think about it. You know, if you went for a back air, then he would have been right in the gyro zone unless it despawned. Okay, so... Yeah, we... Yeah, so you we sure? see, we saw the first back air. Oh, yeah, air. no, the tire just came down right there. Yeah, so if we look over that, the first back air that came in was before the gyro was tossed, and yep. it looked like Zomba went for a second one. Apparently just um, not expecting someone to go deep like that for the stock, and uh, 
Again, Dill pulling out in game three to do it twice, it was very much cemented that uh, Zumba wasn't expecting it. It was like, okay, these first two games, this isn't happening. I don't have to worry about this, right? Now, d I, I've dubbed it Number Sinji 2.0, <laughs> for those of you who have been around since the Stone Age. Um, mm -hmm. But, all right, so th th the point is, Vivi has a chance to possibly upset it. I know that Tilde is definitely the one favored here, but nonetheless, um, I mean, the fact that he's playing Lucario means that who knows, you know, d d oh man, doesn't matter how much early damage Tilde does if he's not confirming it into stocks, that's just a very angry fox mm -hmm. that's going to be possibly killing him at like two. And again, we're seeing what we've seen uh, Tilde show so many times, the reason that he's got the four Pete and looking at the five right now with a good... Uh, route to get to it. Just this very difficult to deal with offense and on a character like Lucario at these lower percents you're going to have to worry about kill confirms right about now. Oh, speaking of kill confirms, the up tilt to back air, the classic that we've seen Tilde do a million times before. Even though the opponents know it's coming and they know to be looking out for it, oh, they still are just not ready for it. There are too many opportunities that he can actually go for. And how much damage are you going to do to this poor man? Yep, there's a lot on the board right now. Oh. Uh, this is Lucario, the comeback kid, so there's always a chance, but uh, Vivi's got his work cut out for him on this one. Oh, yeah. And not only that, he's not even at enough. Oh, he might be now. Yeah, yes. never mind. <laughs> Very nice. So we've actually seen there's a couple separate enders to that. Sometimes we see Vivi go for the back air, sometimes the up air. I believe the up air is in response to potential SDI or DI mm. to try to get away from it. So a little bit of a mix up and very difficult to react to that. Oh, and red sparks. It's a back air at like 140 or something. Whatever it was, 110. I guess I figured it would have been a little bit later. All right, a lot of percentage oh. on this one. And there's not really like anything you can do about that. We got the drag down on the platform into the re-grab. Falling down, there could have maybe been an air dodge there, but that would have most likely been extra damage tacked on by Tilde. Uh, very much in his court for game one on this one. Vivi's got a lot of work mm. if he wants to turn this around. That forward smash almost did it, and uh, Vivi looking for that down air to side beat confirm, but not quite finding it, meaning that he's gonna be taking a lot more damage. 96% already. I know it's good for Lucario to be, you know, have a lot of damage on him, but the fact that we've already seen Tilda so good at finding those confirms that playing around it perfectly for the next however long it's going to have to be is just going to be so difficult. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. See, that's the thing. This is such a big deal about this matchup, and a lot of matchups like this for Lucario. Your comeback mechanic is directly tied to your ability to explode. And there's a lot of characters who cannot blow you up in a wide percentage, um, but Falco is not one of them. Again, we saw the up tilt into the back air. We see the phantasm into the back air. There is not a place where it's like, oh, you know, I can do this as long as I don't get grazed by the wrong move in neutral. Falco pretty much always has a lethal option once you get to a certain percent. Yeah, and we're actually, because of that, we're seeing the character swap. It's actually going to be the hero now. And, okay, uh, this matchup is a lot quirkier. I mean, I mean, I would say that, you know, Lucario, <laughs> Falco is already pretty quirky. But this one is just the dynamism of hero. I mean, already we see Accelerodal in effect. You know, tried to hop out with movement, but didn't even really get the chance. There was so much pressure that he couldn't even get zooming like he wanted mm -hmm. to. And not zooming with Doom, but zooming with Accelerado. Yeah, and that's the thing, right, is that Hero is a character that if you don't have your win condition going up with your buffs, with uh, the things you want to do from your menu, it's very difficult to get started. Hero's frame data is not the best, even on the aerials. They're very large, but if you don't have a stage to run away through, there's not too much you can do. You kind of just got to battle that out. And uh, oh, totally with very this strong neutral. Both Accelerado and I think that was Psych Up, but both of them have now expired and no MP or... Did he have MP? Um, I missed it, actually. I, I, heard the, I heard the wind noise, so I think the charge was happening, but uh, BB was too low on that one, so there wasn't time to get the charge. That is unfortunate. All right, we're having bounce. I mean, I feel like it's a nice utility. It just prevents, you know, the use of lasers to maybe force an approach. And mm -hmm. being very liberal with his use of magic here, as his uh, already his MP down to about half, that is something that we've seen can be relevant. Um, and already, as soon as Bounce runs out, like as soon as it does, Tilda already ready to shoot a laser to interrupt the Vivi with what he's trying to, you know, what his game plan's gonna be. Mm -hmm, absolutely. We've seen a lot of Tilda repping. Again, just in situations where you can't really do anything about it, uh, Falco laser here and there to disrupt, usually after combos. And it's a good extra percent, it's a good chase. It disrupts people as they're recovering, etc., and gives Falco just a little bit more chip you away a bit at a time. 
<laughs> the up tilts right next to each other. Both of them right past the other. Oh, that grab is going to lead to much more damage, possibly, maybe even a stock. But that red glow about him is very scary. All right. Oh, but that it. Oh, interesting. No. For the I think that was uh, recognizing that that wasn't quite in kill percent and going for the forward air instead. Not 100%. That might have also been a reaction to DI. Oh, actually, clips with the back air on that one. Uh, Hero does have a lot of real estate, even if he takes his uh, sweet time throwing a move out. But uh, you can get clipped on that one, covering half of the Smashville stage. Speaking of coverage, we've got Falco. Uh, Tilde's Falco using a move to get to uh, VV to air dodge and then punishing with the up smash, having enough time. I actually tried to do up the out of shield, it looks like that one, and got stuck before it could come out. All right, and this is things. It's kind of turned into a boxing game. Like they are on top of each other constantly for the last thirty seconds or so. And I mean, till this Falco, the boxing game for it is just so strong. You know, there's that upbeat. To <laughs> How much damage did that do after all this reflection? I think that was something like fifteen percent. That was okay. a, a good chunk. Um, it's gonna take a lot more than that, though. This is still a couple of, like, even with hero conversions, like best case scenario, this is still a couple conversions away. And it's difficult to get even a few on Tilde in the first place. Yeah, but it is a sort of thing where <clears throat> Falco has, you know, these big combos, you know, things leading into things leading into things. Hero just kind of hits you once and then twice, and the second thing kills you. <laughs> so there is always the option of this comeback happening. Barely surviving the forward tilt that's really big for Tilde. Yep. Not having to be brought to his last stop means that, well, let's see how it ends up faring for him because this is still a scary position to be in. Mm -hmm. There is the thing also with uh, Hero getting the chance to buff up a little bit between stocks sort of as a reward, and that is more or less his win condition on this one. That enables more use of the menu, that enables going in on your own terms, but it doesn't last forever. And that's the sort of thing where it, playing against Tilde, when you're down by that much, he demands perfection. You can't slip up even once. That up tilt is a quick move. It's an anti-air move, and it leads into that back air, and you know he's looking for it. And if you slip up even once, if you blink at the wrong time, he's going to find it, and you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Smash 4, but it's a little bit more uh, putting your life on the line when you commit, because now Bayonetta, uh, it's more exasperated, exasperated than uh, Smash 4, where if she uses a bunch of specials in the air and she lands, she has a bunch of extra end lag, and a lot of her neutral is showing that ABK, showing the, uh, <laughs> the up B. But uh, we'll see yeah. how. Now, I will say that Noku's play style, one of the sort of one of the ways that he adapts is he pays really close attention to what opponents do in neutral when they're trying to recover because Pokemon Trainer is a character that can, you know, actually abuse that sort of thing so well. Man. Uh, but Bayonetta has arguably one of, if not the best disadvantage states in the game. Like, there aren't going to be many times where you're like, ah, yes, I have a super solid read on what you're going to do, <laughs> so I can kill you at 40 with Ivysaur. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. you got to deal with uh, both Witch Twists. Zero to death. Yeah. It took a while. took 45 seconds, but that's a zero to death. Mm -hmm. And difficult spot to be, right? Like, if you are Noku, getting in like this, this is exactly what you want right here. Actually goes for the re-grab on that one, perhaps not trying to look for a chase with additional moves because of that within. Um... But this is looking a lot better for Noko as we go into the second stock of his. Oh, and that bat with him not actually helping. Too little land lag on that forward tilt. And oh man, this is where things can get scary. Bane at his disadvantage might be really good. But now it has to contest against Ivysaur up air. Oh, 54 damage. You know, why not? Mm -hmm. Ivysaur coming back in. Oh, actually. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that was. I definitely saw the clip on the uh, return with Vine Whip from Ivysaur, but I guess that might have been a misinput on that one. Uh, just going for the forward smash on that one is a very scary option because a lot of Bayonetta's options are fairly quick. That forward smash has a nice big pause in it to really mess with people's tempo. Oh, and here comes the Noku Zard. This is one of, I mean, one of his underrated characters, where I see him sometimes just kill disgustingly early with this character, or sometimes he just plays neutral really well and then kills oh, just no. like that. Got I mean, caught under Pokemon Stadium. 
And despite how de like decisive this beginning was, we have last stock zero for both of them. Granted, some silly things have been going on for Emeralis between that uh, unfortunate downer that he had to, you know, now kind of just that getting trapped underneath PS2. <gasps> Right. It's, it's still even, though. I like the usage of ABK there, getting out of the situation, but still throwing out a hitbox and approaching. Now we're starting to see the Razor Leafs. However, they're, you know, one of those recent buffs that Bayonetta got means that when she uses Witch Time on projectiles, there is more slowdown. So throwing out those Razor Leafs willy-nilly is going to be a big risk. I uh, Speaking of risks, I actually do like that we saw the... Uh, the double slide in on that one, cognizant that it's a little too far to go for a conversion on that one. Opted to punish the landing. That forward smash almost killing, but Zard's extra weight saving Noku right there. Trapped at the ledge though, one forward tilt could probably do it. Looking for the up smash, instead it's going to be the forward throw, intercepting the flare blitz. But Noku kicks back to stage, but... Oh no, that's a big commitment. All right. Noku back at center stage. Just having to jab. Maybe an up B out of shield could have actually killed, but Noku did not want to risk it. That time, the up smash, finally. I mean, that's something that I think we saw Amaryllis doing. A lot of Bayonetta's do that. The side B back from the stage, and the fact it crosses up the opponent means it's tricky to punish. But Charizard up at up smash. I mean, that thing is just too. -choo. Oh, yeah, he's got the windshield wipers on. He's got uh, side to side. He's got to have that coverage. But I will say that does take... A lot of cognizance on that one. He was immediately ready to do that. And that yeah. is a very quick move on shield. It's a very lucrative option, as you say. A lot of Bayonetta's do like to go for that. But there's a lot of other things Bayo can do to mix up and try to get back to the stage. And it's very scary when you could get tossed off and mixed. And I think it is worth sort of noting that I was saying earlier how Noku, you know, he loves to... Those are kind of... That's his bread and butter of where he really excels as a player are those types of situations where he picks up on those habits. I didn't think there were going to be many for uh, Amaryllis, but he found it, and that's actually what let him win game one. We move into game two now, and already it's doing going better for Noku because he got 6%. Not much better <laughs> because that's it, but still better. Yeah. This is, I feel this is almost inevitable when you're playing against Bayonetta. She does have the difficulty killing. There are still a couple good moves, but at low percent, you are probably going to get hit into a combo and take a good amount of percent. It's just the matchup. I mean, it is, but at the same time, we didn't oh, see that's any no jump. stuff. Side B? Yep. It's, wow. I think that covered the jump get up. Very good call out on that one. And so, uh, this might be technically better for Noku, but not by much. These Squirtle combos just aren't there, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like right, e even right there, that should have been some big damage, but afraid to commit, I think, because of how devastating Bayonetta's reversal potential is. Mm -hmm. If you mess up against this character, it could be a Witch Twist into a lot of damage, it could be a grab into a lot of damage, it could be, honestly, pretty much anything. ABK, the slide. Themselves out. This, I think, is the percent you kind of want to feel a little bit more comfortable than Bayonetta. Her conversions start doing a little bit less. Ooh! There's that neutral air to up B. I, you know, Milku loves to go for that. It's actually a little bit tricky to make sure that the hitboxes line up so that it actually can lead into itself. But he is just so consistent at it to the point where it don't ledge jump. Like, that's the thing. I believe that caught a ledge jump. So that long lasting mm -hmm. neutral air is. And, uh, oh, yeah. actually swiping under the stage. We have seen that before from Noku, but really good on that one to beat out the forward smash and not deal with the uh, mix up on ledge. This is also looking like that last... Okay, great up smash, though. That's sort of the Amaryllis special, I believe, <laughs> is what some of the Long Island people have called it. Just going for that up smash, it is very... I mean, it's massive. Mm -hmm. It's real big, and not only that, it covers a really weird range for Bayo, because normally she kind of has to throw herself into the range, and if you're shielding or moving around outside of that range, you can react to a lot of stuff. Uh, that's a little bit harder to deal with. Yeah, we see Noku going for a lot of these Razor Leafs, by the way, trying to look for a Razor Leaf. Confirm there is inherent risk to that. You know, we haven't really seen Emerilus throw out the, the Witch Time, but maybe, you know, sort of saving that thing for a later stage in the game. Yeah, it only needs to be once for it to make a very big impact. All right, I do oh. like that, trying to call out the ABK. Actually had a good call, but just not on time with Amaryllis, but he will get the throw to seal the sock and we're down to 1-1. One, one. Oh, Pat within that frame one air dodge coming out to really help Amaryllis. That could have been huge damage. Again, it helps him to avoid these big combo starters that Noku is managing to land. 
Oh, way off stage. I already taken 92%. Yep, I like the patience on that one. No big rush to get back on stage, but this is a very scary place to be. Bayonetta does have a kill on the forward throw. A lot of options you can do. I'm toss off stage though, and then Noku has the chance to do something with Charizard. Wow, I think Noku's SDI because he seems to be falling out of those uh, those witch twists and that sort of thing. Uh, but I like the switch to Charizard. I think at those percents there were maybe some things that uh, Emeralds could have done to just kill. Yeah. Uh, going to Zard, you know, that survivability really can be helpful. Unfortunately, now trapped at the corner. <gasps> Had oh. the correct read. The spacing was just a little bit off on that back air, but it was a correct call out on the air dodge. Congrats, you're at death percent, Emeralds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no Falco conversion off that up tilt. That's not <laughs> happening here. Oh, and that's almost doing it. One more of those up smashes. It's a little stale, but it might still do the trick. Oh, is that going to be it? No, up pair is that has to be the option. Oh, no. I felt it coming, too. As soon as that up smash was, I'm like, he's going to go for the ground. It's not going to work. The Zard up B. Oh, the up Don't smash. <gasps> oh, actually living at max rage charge. No way. Uh, the other side? Oh, well, it is 200%, but... I don't think I've ever seen it send quite like that before. So the heel drop going to seal it on that one. What a survival on that up smash. That's nutty. Yeah, no, great survival. But also, I think it's worth dwelling on the survival of Noku. I mean, the fact that I think in game one also lived to some very high percents. And yeah, in the end, I think... I feel like Noku thought he won. Mm -hmm. The only reason that up smash didn't kill was because it had been staled. I think he had landed three of them already. And that might have been the third. Oh. Uh, if that was fresh, it probably would have killed. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I'm sure uh, some good DI coming out from Amaryllis as well. Going to take it to a game three. Ooh. Forward smash. <sighs> All right. This is going to be a good amount of damage, but if you're going to get hit by that, it's better at low percent and not getting gimped. All right, Squirtle combos, you know, it's just a one-two right now, but that's <laughs> this is so far the best start that Noku has had. And keep in mind, he won game one. Game two was super-duper last hit. So this is looking pretty decent for him at the moment. Mm -hmm. This is really good. It's still not terrible for Bayonetta because her combo game does so much damage, but the more she accrues, the more likely it is that she's going to get knocked out before she can find a kill <gasps> with her... Uh, I saw a jump. Okay. okay. The kill confirms. Nair to come back down. A nice call, very big hitbox, multi-hits, we can't parry it on the way down. He had no invincibility, but Noku actually went for the forward air instead of the down air. <gasps> oh, there's the down air, and now we have, for the first time this set, Noku takes stock one. Let's see if he can do much with it. Mm -hmm. That was a solid call out right there, going for the double jump backer to call out a jump onto stage. Uh, there's not too much that Bayonetta can do when you go high, except make a hard call out. Oh, and that's oh, the heel drop again. <laughs> Once yeah. more, that survivability from Charizard at 157. Amaryllis is actually struggling to find some way to end it. Up throw's not going to really be doing much, and one commitment like that, back air almost kills? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so risky to throw out those smashes. They are not active as nearly as long as they might look. And this all happened because of that... Uh Smash attack just not sealing the deal. This is a lot of extra percent to take, and Emerus is still not back to neutral. He's ah, dead. That's a lot of extra percent. That is an entire stock that Noku has managed to take. First time he takes a stock first, and already he's turned it into two. Another one of those down airs, but that one actually not going to be killing without any rage on Bayo. And just like that, even more percent. All right, that's a good way to get back into this. Although now at lower percent, Squirtle once again becomes very dangerous. <laughs> The way <laughs> I do actually like the witch twist on that one. It's very difficult for a lot of characters to contest that hitbox. Um, so if you're going to get out of the situation and throw out a hitbox, might as well use the up B. What was that? Oh, he beats the air dodge. Tries to go for down air, but Emeralds' drift is just a little bit too wide. And oh, things can go really awry here. Putting Noku off stage. He has to burn his jump and actually helps him make it back. But man, Emeralds right. fighting. That's, that's the classic, the booster kick back to mid-stage to the back air. I thought we were going to see it again there. Oh, no. Throw not having enough range. That might be a really big deal off stage. Got to guess. <laughs> Trapped in the corner, we see Noku threatening that back air. He's facing away. But just because he's threatening that back air doesn't mean he's actually looking for something like a grab into up throw. 
Oh, I saw the opening frames of that aerial. Yeah, and the Charizard side, he gets him back to the middle of the stage, but for how long? Ooh, going deep on that one. And nice. nice. Oh, last stock for both players. You know, last time around, Noku was the one sitting at very high percent on his last stock and managed to survive. And let's not forget, Bayonetta has comeback power. The potential. No that's way! It. What a chase! That was exactly what Amarillus needed. Uh, it's what? always, it's every single time that a Bayonetta takes anyone high up towards the corner, it's always going to feel like this combo because of things like this. You never want to be hit by that. He, he what? <laughs> Wait, I need a around. replay on that. Oh my God. And see, the thing is, is we saw, it is very difficult, right? To mount an offense when you are down like this, it is your last stock. You can just be slammed by anything. The we whole saw... thing started from like the stage. That wasn't mm -hmm. even like he started it on a platform and or anything like that. What was Noku gonna do? Swing tech. back, maybe. He could have Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that, was a little, that was a little far back. That was like a couple could chapters ago. Could have done ago. Switch. Potentially switch or air dodge on that one and it is a big commitment But I think what we saw earlier on and this happened too with um, you were seeing Ivysaur do the Nairs offstage We saw that early on to counter bullet arts to try to recover a little bit easier, but uh, Amaryllis went on the offensive went super deep Which is again very scary to do when you are one hit away from death at any given time about all the possibilities, all of the timelines, he managed to weave his way through the one where he's managing to stay alive in the tournament. Now let's get over to here. This is a matchup that everyone has been watching from week to week here. It's gonna be Zomba versus Tilden. Yep, I think the only time we have uh, seen this turnout in Zomba's favor was during the Xeno Saga Monthly, but not part of the weekly. Tilde has been taking this pretty convincingly most of the time. All right, feeling it out. Again, this is a rough part of this matchup. Rob does have issues with landing, and Falco, one of the most aerial uh, mobile characters in the game. I mean, just the fact that he has that double jump that goes so high and basically threatens. Normally, Rob can float up high, you know, be like, hey, I'm just gonna back air. I'm just gonna do whatever. No. Falco can get up there in an instant. Mm -hmm. I like the Phantasm on that one, recognizing the back air out of range and then goes to punish the landing with Phantasm. Oh, the last hits of that up air connecting were big, but unfortunately Zomba did not actually manage to find some type of follow-up. It is worth noting the percent's very even right now. Maybe a little bit scarier for Zomba just by you know the nature of the kill power so consistent from Tilde. Mm -hmm. Very good patience on that one as He's well. Tilde with... Dead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it, he could have recovered if he didn't have a giant down air from Zomba that was waiting for him at the ledge. All right, twisting around. Didn't quite get it on that one. Might have been trying to um, SDI through for the roll. Or not shield DI. I don't remember what the target um, is. There is. I think he also maybe could just angle. In shield SDI. Yeah, in in shield SDI. Him. He also maybe could have uh, just angled his shield to make sure he didn't get hit by the last hit. Mm -hmm. All right, the chase there, that was going to be the back air. I don't think that would have killed, but that would have continued to put Zomba in a poor position. Just like he's at right now. <laughs> And all these hops just, oh yeah, this could be a double jump and an up air to kill you, so. I mean, he still took like 5 to 6% just from being in the magnifying glass for like, <laughs> you know, for an entire TikTok length. Mm-hmm, it's scary. He's oh dead. no, the air dodge. All right. It's two air dodge kills so far in this game. I do like the hit with uh, the back hit of Nair on that one, potentially going for a combo conversion after that, but nothing doing as Tilde is shielding. Not in too much of a rush in this one, and we have seen a lot when Tilde has a lead, he knows how to hold it and how to pressure the opponent with it. Oh, that combo snatched away from Tilde, and now he does have to be kind of scared. When you're, you know, at the ledge like this, when you're off stage like this, I love the high recovery. Definitely Zomba looking for maybe a down angle to the ledge. And if Tilda had bitten and gone for that, you'd be dead right now. Instead, mm -hmm. that was surviving. the guess. Uh, dead? Yeah. No angle's going to save you from that one. If he went straight up, you think you maybe could have drifted back? I was just thinking about it. I think maybe the drift could have happened, but that down air does not have a lot of recovery on it. I think he maybe still could have gotten swatted, but <laughs> potentially living. 
Sorry, that's my, my it ain't Mickey Mouse coming out. No, it's all good. I completely understand. This is see, and again, we've seen all these hops just threatening. Oh yeah, I can go up, and then till they with the full hop into the upper, which could kill with this percent. Oh, and that's gonna be a forwarder to actually take it. Yep. Nice. Yeah, and again, Tilde is fantastic about threatening these options because it's clear as day. Zumba is sitting there in shield. Okay, I know back air can kill me. I know back air can kill me. I know back air can kill me. Tilde moved away. I'll just jump. No, you won't. You're dead. Tilde does not need to commit to a thing. Tilde has the lead. Tilde is in no danger of dying. Tilde has I would the not go that state. far. Tilde is in very little chance of dying um, <laughs> at any given time. He might spontaneously I mean, combust. Well, I haven't seen it on Keep in mind, Rob Gyro combos there. I have seen him die at zero That's to true. Zumba's shenanigans. That's true. But it is something to pay attention to a lot of the times because it's very easy to look at Tilde's flashy play, but the flashy play enables something else, which is fear of getting hit by the flashy play. So then you see Tilde jump, oh no, it'll be that cool ass down air, and then I'll get chased and I'll eat like 70%, and he's not doing anything, and I've committed to a defensive option, and I'm dead. Yeah, and the thing is, like, despite the fact that Zomba has played against, I mean, at this point, he's played against Tilde a lot. The fact that Tilde is still evolving, still managing to find ways to keep Zomba on his toes, not really you know, sure how to proceed through the aggression, that in and of itself speaks volumes. But we're now at a point where both of these guys in the red, next hit here might kill, and that's going to do it. Yep, call out on the jump. Well, call out on the jump timing on that one. That covered a lot of options on that one, but very oh. difficult. Very scary to hold the ledge against Rob. Still getting the conversion to the forward air, jeez. Man. So, uh, sorry, Tilda always knows exactly how to link hit into hit into hit. Yeah, that there it is. Yep. Not only that, I know one thing he does with the up air is he kind of mixes you up with the cross up of it. So mm -hmm. if you DI for it, you know, thinking it's going to hit in front of you and then he hits behind, your DI is just going to go straight up and you just you, you explode at like 0%. <laughs> Not zero, but like. Yeah. yeah. At that percent, I think a lot of stuff would have exploded him. But yes, definitely mixing up the DI is a tricky thing to deal with. All right. Actually, unsafe on the spacing with that forward are going a little too deep on that. And Zomba oh. going to take control of the stage because of that one mistake. No jump. I'm surprised Zomba didn't go for a side B. I think he wanted to go for back here to make sure he still had time to you know, react. Oh, okay. oh, Making it back. No conversion off Illusion. And you see right that no conversion available off of Phantasm. Jumps and baits it. Goes for the counter hit or the whiff punish. All right. Scary place. Oh, that'll just kill. Wow. That does send at a pretty advantageous angle when you're at that sort of percent and you're that far off stage. Understandable. And it's also, there's a chance he wasn't DIing for it perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, he might have been holding that angle for um, for the actual angle of the uh, of the fox fire. Firebird, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Once again, the old reliable up tilt coming in for the combos. It's now on Zomba to land. Yeah. <laughs> the read was there, too. And you'll notice that Zomba is a lot more comfortable going for these high recoveries with this particular platform layout. Oh, but, you know, getting, getting a little bit too comfortable. He doesn't need platforms to get all the way up there. You know, as soon as you get within his zone, he can go right up to meet you. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we've seen Zomba try to mix it up a little bit with these back airs, making it a little ambiguous, trying to land with Nair. But... It's always going to be in Falco's court when you're landing. No. Oh, no. He maybe could have air dodged to live, but I think if you air dodge in that position, Zomba yeah, would be it's... there to, to make sure you die no matter what. Even then, um, that might have been a percent where air dodging would have shifted him into the blast zone because it shifts you I... a little bit. Does it? I thought that air dodging... Directional air dodge makes you die later. So, yeah, so the thing is, is that it resets your aerial momentum, but when you do a directional air dodge, the first couple frames, you ship in the opposite, uh, shift. But it in the also cancels direction. your hit stun earlier than, say, a jump would. I'm not 100% sure on that. I just know that I have seen multiple times people who will do the air dodge and the shift will kill them. Um, so it might be a scenario of there was no way out of that. Hard to say. All right, actually getting out of the drag down on that one with the spot dodge really good. 
Oh, I love that parry on the landing hit of the forward air led to, a, you know, a, some nice damage. And they're going back and forth. We haven't really seen that much back and forth between these two. Normally, it's one player just blows up the other. Oh, but, you know, they're, I mean, maybe it just took a little while to happen. Because as it stands, Zomba at 75%. Oh! Yep, had a call out that Zomba was going to go for the right platform on that one. But nothing doing. Zomba going the entire opposite way. Right. Also, I think it, it, you know, it says a lot that Zomba grabs him and immediately goes for that back throw, trying to get him off stage. He knows that that's where his big plays have been happening. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Patient. That was good reactions on that one. All right. That's so scary to do. Even if you can potentially hit Rob, there's always a hurt, uh, hitbox available when Rob is recovering like that. Oh. Nice, the chase. Actually, uh, weaving in on the end lag of one of the back airs on that one. Oh, and he actually grabs the gyro after reflecting it. That could have been some big damage. Oh, but the big damage comes regardless. All of these moves and might even be able to reset on the platform. No, the neutraler gets Zomba back down to the ground. And the up smash turnaround. We now have two stocks apiece. 61% on Zomba doesn't look too great, but, you know, at least he's uh, made it even footing and... You know, he can still die. Tilde can be knocked off stage and die to a side beat even now. Mm -hmm. This is very much still available for both players. This is only like one interaction for everything to change momentum wise. All right, this is a really good spot for Tilde though. Once again, catching a Rob landing. Actually a little too far out to get the confirm into the back air. Then in the end, he just finds it raw. And that's a massive pickup for Zomba. I mean, I'm sorry, for Tilde, rather. He's only at 75%. He can, oh yeah, once he gets one of those combos started, already 47 onto Zomba. And that's the sort of thing that can grow and compound. Once he gets that point where the kill confirms are, you know, threatening, then the fact that Zomba has to play around it makes it so much trickier. And again, we're seeing catching that landing on the platforms for Small Battlefield on this one. It is difficult, even though Zomba gets back so often, to make landings work with this character. There's only so many ways you can mix it up, and they're slow. I love that tech roll away because, you know, Zomba went for the down smash, which covered both tech roll and place. Really? Oh, okay, I, I was about to explain a scenario, but <laughs> what totally didn't give me time. What? I think that was the cross-up on the up air. Oh, cross maybe. Cross-up in the up air. We can get a replay on this. He was, at, he was at 797. Okay, well, actually, he was at a 111 after the hit. Wait, let's take a look here. Yeah, the back hit on that yeah, one. Yeah, that looked like out. it was... Did he... Wait, did he raw it? Let me see. Let's say. Uh, no, he no, was facing forward, forward, forward. Facing. So that... Yeah, that, that might have just been kill percent. I mean, that is quite high percent. up into the blast zone. Small battlefield. What? That's the yeah, DI line. The... That's not perfect DI for... Is up there, is it? You just want to DI to the left. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's DI left or if you want to DI down a little bit on that one. But either I way, mean, that was uh, kind of a surprise on that one. You don't see too many chases off of the up throw for that. We don't have time to really dwell on things because we're moving right into the next game. It's going to be BV versus Amaryllis. Amaryllis who kind of snatched victory from Noku in the last set we saw him in. Uh, he's up against VV now, who is known for snatching victories himself, for yeah, this, sure. This is the character to do it with, for sure. All right. So the thing about the neutral on this, right, is this is somewhat similar. Bayonetta doesn't really have it that much with Witch Time, but there's the factor of, oh yeah, you know, if I make a mistake, I might eat a Bayo back here, or I might eat a command grab, and then I'm dead. The difference is that Lucario kind of thrives a little bit when he's at that kill percent, and there's a lot of options and conversions to go for. Bayonetta kind of has to work to make a scenario where she can get that. Yeah, and a oh, massive forward smash. BB not even at that high percent, managing to take it is a big plus for him. Oh, that up air's not gonna kill. That up air's never gonna kill him, even at like <laughs> 150. Oh, now you're oh. dead. No, oh, no, the wrong dead. direction. All right, I do like a little bit of weight on that one. Vivi with a lot of aura, actually, maybe not having the uh, conversions off of grab that he would normally have at low aura. All right, patience. Not committing to any option right there at a high percent, and there is time to wait. Oh, nice. The, with these aura spheres, the movement options themselves are just making it difficult for Amaryllis to 
pin him down. And 144% on Lucario is certainly scary. A great dash attack that's actually going to take the stock, meaning that Emeraldus can breathe a little bit easier. Not necessarily that easy because, you know, he's still almost at 100 and Lucario, with the proper read, can kill. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we did see actually there... Um, <laughs> Okay, this is... Yeah, this is fine. Oh, that is a big punish. No, way, Dad! Oh, I mean, Lord. He comboed him, took him to 80. You fool. Now he, <laughs> now you're at death per se. Yep, and now we do have some aura building up as Emerilis goes in with a squishy character. She's got the butterfly wings for a reason, and you don't want to eat this extra percent when you're a stock behind. Oh, that's punishable. Oh, yeah. For certain, and oh, looking for the actual punish. I think that that's once again both calling out maybe a roll onto stage as well as that afterburner kick off of the ledge. You know, it's a great option, but if people really know they can hard commit to punishing it, you, I mean, you've seen already, Amaros just blows up. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And the thing about it, too, is that it's a great commitment because the hitbox is good, but that does not matter when you have a projectile that has no hurtbox attached to it. Ooh, wow, look at the drifting! The back and forth from Vivi lets him land! I, and I am not certain. I think Vivi traded with the Smash with an aerial landing. I'm not 100% sure. With the Smash? What you, which one? So, Bayonetta's Smash attack, I don't know if it's the same as Corrin, but I think it's got low priority. Oh no, maybe that... Yeah, okay, I... That so, might have just been that the hitbox was already Yeah, gone. can we... Well, we, we should be able to see them clank, but... I mean, I think yeah. it would hit... Oh, no, it hit the... I think it hit the Aura Sphere. Mm -hmm. And because it hit the Aura Sphere, that was a clank. Yep, she's got low priority on those smash attacks. Again, like Corrin, if you toss out a move and the hitboxes is there, it doesn't really win out, which you wouldn't expect for a giant fist. And see, I really like the sharking here on the platform on this one, making it difficult to come down. And it's kind of scary landing against Bayonetta with ABK. So far, this is a much better start for MRLS, able to get some damage and not really get taken for a ride himself. But nonetheless, this is still... Ooh, it's very scary. One single mess up leads to this damage and... Uh, you need having a damage buffer against a high, you know, percent Lucario just makes things feel so much better. Poof! Bat with incoming and clutch on that one. That was not death, but that was a continuing bad situation. Oof. All right. Wow. Oh, because no. she was in lag from I think all of the uh, the specials that she did. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is a lot more lag in this game than in Smash Four. Oh, so that actually does cover spot dodges. If you don't get the command grab, the hitbox comes out late enough that it will still clip you. Very strong move if you're expecting that on the defense. Ooh. Version. And this is one of those points where things start to get really hairy for Amaryllis. He needs a stock taken immediately, but Bayo can kind of struggle to do that. A back air would be nice. A dash attack, as we've seen before, can work, but not going to have an opportunity for any of those. Those aura spheres are just too big, man. That aura sphere was so fat, I think the ABK lost to it coming in from the front. That's kind of whack. All right. Low percent on this one. This does mean Lucario has the chance to rack up some combo percent. Ooh, nice SDI, making sure to get himself to the right of that uh, whole Witch Twist combo. I think that meant that they ended up taking less damage than they possibly could have. Playing out the neutral a little bit on this one. A lot of zigzagging. Yeah, no, both of these characters kind of have that zigzagging movement. You know, for <laughs> Lucario, it's these B reverse wave bounce aura spheres. And for Bayonetta, it's just, you know, her standard special moves. And so you see them going back and forth in the air, trying to find, you know, an opening. And, oh, I actually really do like the trap right there, baiting out the air dodge and punishing. Oh, the counter will 100% kill. Very good. Yeah, that uh, counter, by the way, it not only does it auto lock, but it, um... It is not based on the strength of the move that he connect that connected with him. Oh, it really? is based on his own aura. Oh no, yep. that's really good. Chill. Still, granted, a risk as all counters are, but paying off from Vivi. And now we're looking at dividends. 52% on this one with a stock lead, and Lucario is growing an aura. And not only that, he's at 119. Doesn't even have to be that scared of what Amaryllis can do. 
Emeralds has not shown really a potential for any stocks. I knew it was coming five seconds before, and I'm like, there's going to be a Hail Mary kill option, and he's at the ledge. It's going to be ABK to back air. And not only that, there was some <laughs> absolutely atrocious DI from Vivi. He yeah. was holding forward for the forward smash, and that sent him like, that was the Bermuda Triangle DI, like all the way to the bottom right corner. Oh, no. Well, still, even at this low percent here, this is a scary place to be. If Amaryllis can't get a lower percent, you not only have to contend with a fresh stock, but a fresh stock on a character who gets more deadly the more you hit him. This is a good place to be. You fool, you've done damage to him. <laughs> now you're at death percent. If you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. I, I said it, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he did damage to him and gave him kill power. Mm -hmm. I don't that back wouldn't have killed if you didn't combo him to 80. I'm just saying. I mean, that's the thing though. You could say like, well, you know, if I hit Lucario, why am I even playing? What if I put down the controller and maybe he'll he'll find his way into I, his magic deck? I or think something. that was a misinput also. <laughs> Looking at it again. I mean, it was a, the, what was that which time supposed to be covering? Well, if it was close to the landing on that one, that covers Well, uh, we can take a look at the replay. Mm -hmm. Um because it seems like it was very far away. I don't even know if there was an out of shield option that could have landed. I, I think, think that was a misinput. I think that it could have been. That might also have been a cover because the ABK is not, I mean, it's not plus. It's hard to punish, but it's at that situation where uh, VV might have come up and swung back. And that might have been to cover that preemptively, like, oh, this is where Vivi's going to come in and start this offense. Um, but it may have also been a misinput. Again, it's very common for Bayonetta to use uh, Witch Time while landing because it cancels out the animation that adds on to you as you use your specials in the air. Um, but it was a Fun. commitment that sealed it. Fun to handle that. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I think that we're most likely going to see Dill with a lead at least once in this set. <laughs> Uh, I'd be surprised if we didn't. So we'll see if, you know, he, Luigi Jesus is able to respond. Mm -hmm. So we're starting off on Town and City. Interesting one on that. A lot of characters cannot stop Wii Fit from getting a deep breathing at round start here. Rob actually in the face there, but not going for a direct punish because that can be shield canceled. And uh, there can be a counter punish waiting for you if you overcommit to it. Yeah, not only is, does it lead into an amazing, you know, just having access to deep breathing is great, but it's also a baiting tool. The opponent really doesn't want you to be having that, so they'll do anything they can to stop you. See it right there, actually canceling out into shield and then going for the parry. Now, this is a particular strength of Wii Fit that's not exclusive to the playstyle of John Numbers. A lot of different ways to mix up the recovery that makes it difficult for Rob to get an early gimp. So this does help survivability in the matchup. Yeah, especially the, the wiggle that Wii Fit has during things like her up B and the fact that you can stall with side B. Definitely there are tools that I would be surprised if Dilla's like consistently getting stocks, you know, taking them off stage. Mm -hmm. Let me see right there. A little bit of an aggressive grab on that one, but Dill currently jumping back. Actually goes for the bait on the Nair one on that one. That's usually uh, into imagination. That's the dream combo starter, but at a higher percent, might not have been too many options to go for. All right, now both of these guys in the red here, but I believe that's deep breathing in effect for Louis Jesus. It runs out just as Dill gets back to the stage. Oh, down throw into up air. Yeah, no way you're surviving that, yeah. even on town and city. Yeah, and the DI was really good on that too, but just not surviving at that percent. Oh, yes, you got deep breathing, but at what cost? This is the sort of thing where Dill with the lead, what's she gonna do with it? Oh, oh, got the snipe. Wasn't ready for the low angle on the volleyball. I surprised. <laughs> I mean, there's. Did, was Dill doing like a like a back air or something like that? Oh, speaking of back air, I'm not sure. Oh, that's. Oh no. And with that, the lead that Louis Jesus had uh, swiped away has been swiped right back. This is a really rough place to be. Still doable with a character with an explosive offense like Wii Fit, but this is a lot of interactions you need to get to even this up, let alone win. And it's the sort of thing where you know that Louis Jesus, you know, he said, oh, neutral air into imagination, a great Wii Fit combo. But still knows that's what Louis Jesus is. That's dead. dead. All right. Yep. Game two. Let's that would have been dead at 0%. Yeah. That was so far yeah. out, that was probably dead at 0%. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that was kind of a domination, um, especially, you know, once Dill got the lead, it wasn't even that she really played to that lead. It was just that, you know, 
the bravery, you know, having access, you know, sort of knowing that there's more wiggle room to take risks. Funnily enough, you know, that's how uh, Dill managed to really, you know, seal the deal. And we saw actually just a risk from there. Luigi's just trying to toss out the header, trying to put a projectile on the screen, make it a little difficult. Dill already in his face. Um, so it's difficult, right, when Rob gets the stage and has you off stage, and there's so many options to contend with. It's very scary, especially at a percent like that. <gasps> oh, right. what are you doing? Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, How did wait, that really dead? No, the jump was available. There was no opportunity to jump. That was just dead. That was a kill. How did that happen? I guess that percent was kill percent. Um, not a great place to start if you're Louis Jesus, but an excellent place to start if you are Dill. Looking pretty confident going into this game, too. All right. Do we have the JV4? No. No. I mean, uh, it's consolation prize at best if you're Louis Jesus right now. Already at 67%, barely able to touch Dill at all here. And not only that, like, Dill with a lead. We're now going to be seeing Dill play with this lead as 103%, 105 already tacked onto Louis Jesus. And you see, again, like, Louis Jesus had that back air try to catch the jump. Uh, Dill has already passed it going for the counterattack. You saw Louis Jesus on that landing, tried to swing, ate a laser. There's a lot of trying to start this offense here. Tossing out the header to try to put a hitbox out, be offensive on this one. And Dill is just prepared for the counterplay. Yep, he's seen it. She's seen it a thousand times before in a thousand different ways. So none of those offstage shenanigans are, you know, none of them are without risk. And Dill just exploiting them to the fullest. This is about to, this is the triple lap that's about to happen here. 80% on Louis Jesus. He is packed into the corner like this, a sardine. Yeah, this is, this is near impossible. You can do this, but this is so many interactions to win. This is uh, Dill's game to lose, if anything. Oh, but right. even there, the up air not connecting. And that's the sort of thing where if you take a stock right there, well, maybe there is a glimmer, but... Oh. All right, that's good. 123, are we going to get a little bit of a heal? No, going to hang on to the sun salutation. All right, that's Ooh. a good amount of... <laughs> yeah, I, I understand the idea behind it. But um, oh. misspacing the up smash, and Dill is not even going to flinch. I think time just stopped for me when I saw that up smash whiff. Like, my guts folded. I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> so I think that was a misconfirm. That was Nair 1 does combo into the up smash there. And I think the confirm just wasn't there. Look, all the time in the world to realize, oh, no, I've made a terrible mistake. Yep. Me also. Well, anyway, that is his real voice. He definitely sounds like that. Uh, every voice clip is him. He's a great impersonator. But he going into game one, we're going to figure out how this works because Vivi has had a bit of a rough time, been showing very well recently, but Dell, I think, has been one of the bracket demons for him. Well, let's see how this progresses. You know, one of the big sort of <laughs> overarching sort of plots with Lucario in general, is how do you survive? How do you play around your opponent's kill options? And at the very least, Rob, it's not like Rob blows you up out of nowhere like a Falco would, mm -hmm. but at the same time, once he puts you on ledge, it's a different story. Yeah, there's, um, the closer you get to the end of the stage, the more likely it is you're to be hit with some nonsense. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just scary. No, it just bounced right off, you know? That wouldn't have been that bad if you got hit by it. Certainly wouldn't have been uh, very bad. Probably would have been very dead. <laughs> right. Omega dead. I actually do really like that approach on that one. So that Nair is safe on shield, and that uh, reverse aerial rush allows Vivi to respond with a back air if there's a punish opportunity. So a really good uh, approach. On that. Oh boy, look how big that sphere is. Dill was ahead, you know, this entire game, but all of a sudden things are looking pretty dicey for her. And we actually saw there Vivi with the Aura Sphere pop up, but not having the convert. Oh, no. Oh, power's <laughs> right through the gyro. I mean, did you expect gyro to stop that thing? Did you see I it? I kind of did. It was did. a train, dude. It was a, it was. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's still a catch. There's, I think the only thing that could have saved Vivi in that scenario is a really slick angle around Dill or hitting Dill directly. But even then, that was uh, a rough gamble to make. Yeah, especially considering I think Vivi had already delayed it just a little bit, so... Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, you know, that, that was a really good pickup for Dill. Ooh, but these combos already. Low percent Lucario, not something that people oh, normally Scott, fear, see? but... Oh, no! Who was ever going to tech that? God, you could put that on replay like three times and I still wouldn't tech that. <laughs> Jesus. All right, this is actually looking really in Vivi's favor now. Not even that too high on the aura, so still able to get that conversion at low percent. <gasps> Going way up there. Yeah, making it back. <laughs> the higher the aura is, the greater the recovery. And it is a great recovery, distance-wise. Actually getting right under the back here on that one, too. And smacking the gyro out of the way in the process. Vivi right now looking pretty dead. Pretty good. No, pretty alive. <laughs> making it. And even at that recovery on stage, kind of tricky for eventually. All right, Dill going to be cleaning up that stock, which is, once again, like when Lucario does not die, just refuses to die. It's probably one of the worst feelings in the world. Because mm -hmm. not only is they, are they living forever, but they also, their power gauge is, you know, at maximum until you figure out how to actually end them. This is a really rough situation because low percent. Vivi's not quite finding the conversion he was finding in the first couple stocks. Dill doing a really got, uh, good job to adapt on this one. This yeah. Is, yep, and and that was going to be a job walking the kill. And then still got the chase even on the tech roll. This oh, is rough. The, the use of Gyro right now is so good. Just shutting down Vivi's movement. Vivi loves to be going back and forth with the Aura Sphere. But none of that is chase. being allowed. I thought, it was, I thought it was going to be run-up command grab. I felt it in my bones. All right. Scary. Oh. Yep, so that's a difficult place to be. There's a lot of options that Lucario has on that one. Went for the uh, safer one on that to try to call it a jump, but nothing doing. <gasps> and even parrying, that was not enough. And that's going to be it. I missed tech. I don't know. I think at that point, teching wouldn't have saved him. Uh, Correct? I. It's difficult for me to say. I think... Because there was the, the fade back first. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take, let's take a look at that yeah. again. So, Rob, very big, especially when going for the tornado on that one. The Those... double hit, tech chase. Yeah, tech at that percent, I don't think rolling any direction would have gotten you out of that situation. Yeah, because of the specific range that uh, Dill did it at. Could have gone back and covered. If you did tech roll in, maybe it wouldn't have killed... Uh, that's a big maybe. Like, if it was at the back end, it still would have sent out, though. Yeah, that's, but. it's covering this distance, mm -hmm. not including the fact that Rob can move back and forth. Yep. I think it's safe to call that a checkmate scenario. If it's not a checkmate, it's damn close to one. All right. Oh, the counter poke on the forward air with the nair. Interesting. All right. All right. It is also worth mentioning briefly that... Right now in Losers Finals, Zomba is sitting waiting for the winner of this. And Zomba was the one who knocked Dill into Losers in the first place. So I'd say that she's probably looking for the run back. And that's, you know, a motivating force as, you know, kind of running away with this game one is Lucario. And in any instance that, you know, run away can be cut brutally short. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, it's Lucario looking Lucario nice. does have uh, the protagonist plot armor when he needs it. I believe it that he was based on Goku. He is voice actor Sean Chemmel. It's the same guy. All right. The chase on that one. Actually looking for the anti-air tornado. I kind of like that as an option because that would have covered the wave bounce aura sphere uh, before that Vivi could have reacted to that. Really good hitbox on the tornado, well, actually. That answers the question we had before. Mm -hmm. In fact, it does not matter where and how you tech. Yeah. Very, very scary place to be. There's just not a, really anything you can do there. All right, Tech Chase. Yep, getting the Nair off that one. And see, that's the thing. Dill has been so on point with these Tech Chases. They have been lethal. Uh, if not lethal, they have been punishing. And then you've got Vivi. Not anything uh, poor on his part, but it's like Lucario gets a Nair off that. There's yeah. just a lot of situations I don't, that... I don't think he has a jump. Yeah, forced to get back down to the ground like that. It was snatched up, and I think the up tilt earlier on, and it led to all of this damage, all this pressure that's still continuing to this very day. I like the double wave bounce, though, coming in and then going out purely on the B reverses alone. Right. Oh, looking for an up smash, I think, but in the end, Vivi just drifts too far away to still really be able to conceivably land something like that. Catches the gyro. Nice. It is in Vivi's court for the moment. And right back out. Oh, got it! Nice. Good stuff. I mean, 
that is, you know, fantastic option. Great job covering the jump right there. But if Dill were to someday, I don't know, say jump side B in that particular situation and reflect that aura sphere. So, d granted, that hitbox on that uh, full charge laser is a lot smaller than it would have you believe, but that was still right by that. That would have been kill. Good conversion off that as well. That's a really difficult thing to deal with Gyro right behind you. All right. Facing out a little bit, this one. Ball is definitely in Dill's core. Please, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say you don't you don't want to go out like that. That hurts in the soul. No damage on Dill means that without rage, that was not gonna be killing. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, that's still a lot of damage. And uh, really, oh no, that's it. death. That's, yeah, yeah, it's gone. That's it. That we've seen a lot of that from Dill. We saw that in the mirror with Zomba. Um, it's just having Gyro behind you, because if you commit to get Gyro, that's very good, because Rob can't summon another Gyro while one's already on the field, but then you give up space, you're committing something, unless you're doing a really specific item pickup. Uh, also, I, I think it's worth really looking, let's look at that clip again, because notice the plan that happened here. Gots this, gets this up smash, um, and then immediately shoots this Gyro over to here, and that's, that was always what Dill was gonna be looking for from that point on. Just moving it back ever so slightly in order to bait landing in between so that then the down tilt is just, you know, ever so juicy. Yep, very intelligent choice on that one. Going for the space control on the landing. I'm ready for the... <laughs> yeah, like, notice the fact that Dill moved away from it to make sure to bait Vivi into going between them. Like, like, engineering the pincer formation as the walls close in. Jump by Zomba's offense, and most people do. Zomba's offense is terrifying once he gets started. Uh, so I wonder if we'll see her take the advantage early on, or maybe uh, try to go for the defense on this one and see if you can slug it out, because it's a long road either way. So we go into game one. Ooh. Yeah, back and forth. This is something we saw in, I think it was game three between these two. Before that, you know, most of the time they kind of, you know, one gets the other in disadvantage and kind of really puts pressure on something we're seeing right now. Dale not able to get out of the corner, get back onto the stage. A beautiful bait right there. Grabs the ledge, sort of like asking for Dill to grab it in response, but gets back to stage to find the back air. That was... Absolutely brilliant from Zomba. Mm -hmm. What's funny is we actually did see Dell try to get something started on that one, and Zomba, not going too aggressive, was just there for the counterattack every time. Oh mm. no. Oh no. That is very disheartening. Mm. If it yummy, was yummy, yum. a hill to climb before, we are now at a mountain and there is no trail. There's a lot of work to be done. This is one of those geographic mountains that's growing as you climb it. <laughs> that's what's happening right now because the disparity, the difference between these two is growing even more. That's going to be a... T oh, and look, the bait going. too. There's no, you don't need to commit. Why even open up the chance for a mistake when you can just react? This is such a lead. Look oh, at these man. options. Uh, yeah, no, that's Get, it. Get oh, out of here. Take no. us to game two. Yep. Well... There is something to be said for being able to transition to game two with a clear head. Uh, I think Dill has seen so much competition that if there's anyone can do it, I believe it's her. But that is a very tough game one to swallow. Yeah, no, it was going back and forth, but then Zomba got the lead, and it wasn't even like he's like, oh, I'm going to play to a lead. I'm going to be passive and defensive. This is my person who's defensive voice. Yeah. Uh, no, he was just like, no, I'm just going to take little tiny risks here with massive reward and just going to explode you. And by I, the end of that, 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 was, that, that last stock was just blah. It's funny because we actually do see Zomba use that kind of play style, especially like lower in bracket where he's not too afraid. So very much feeling himself no are you kidding me? uh no the tech is oh. there I'm gonna go to the other side i like the call all right kind of low on fuel though needs to get back to stage in order to rejuvenate it and just swinging back and forth like two children doing a slap fight yeah still looking to sort of respond in kind with a gyro combo of her own but zomba did not get hit by it and that means that dill's gonna be suffering just like that did he did he catch the 
neutral air? Was that, that, was what a that was a forward air. So Dill tried to land with a forward air to try to catch some aggression. And again, same thing with game one. Zamba, despite all the aggression, despite all the crazy things that he does in bracket, he can wait. That is one of his greatest strengths. And it's similar to Tilde. Uh, it puts you in a position where you know he will go for the wacky stuff and you can get hit by stuff. And it makes you want to make a choice and then you land into a counter. Poke. Ooh, that up air almost evening things up, but as it stands, Dill's still kind of struggling to find a way to actually end the stock here. Ooh. Beautiful forward air. That was tackable, but <laughs> who was going to tackle that? Yep, that's not an option you see too often oh on this one. God. Oh, my God. Really? Gee, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. It's uh, Rob Nato. All right. Oh. Going to get a chase off the heavy laser. This is once more in Zomba's court, the conversion. Come on, do it. Yeah. Side B, you coward. Uh, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. That's what was on everyone's mind, but I think Zumbo was aware there was no conversion. And why go for it and put yourself in a risk when you can get the real conversion? <gasps> that yeah. was fantastic. That was runaway, man. That is... Zumbo wants to get a, a run back at Tilda right now, who's sitting in grands. He didn't mess around at all for that game. And... <laughs> Again, I feel him in this specific field. Tilde is the player that doesn't let him do that. Mm -hmm. Tilde's pressure being on top of him constantly, and these little ways that he's always threatening. Zomba has been put through the grinder, been you know burned one too many times. That ooh, this is. I mean, look what's about to happen here. One hit from Tilde could spell absolute disaster for Zomba. Mm -hmm. And we have seen this matchup time and time again. I don't believe Zomba has taken it yet at a weekly coming from loser's side. It's going to be a lot of work, but he's been putting in some serious effort. That last set with Dill. <gasps> oh, no, not oh. going for the forward throw. Wouldn't have gotten the kill. There was time to shake out and it wouldn't have sent far enough. I mean, I, I, I trust I trust Tilda's judgment for certain. Yeah. And I mean, he ends up getting the kill a moment, a moment afterwards anyway. But I would have liked to have seen it going oh, for that forward throw. And, you know, the platform does displace him as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance maybe he could have gotten a follow-up, even if it's dash attack or something Believe like me, that. I, I wanted to see it too. I was hoping with all my hope that we would see it. Oh. Right. The drag uh, down on that one, not actually getting the second up tilt. He thought the gyro was still going to be there. The gyro had despawned. If the gyro oh. was still there, he would have dragged him down into the gyro for an extra confirm. I see. Very good point on that one. All right, the back here. Being, yeah, and again, you see this, right? Zomba moves away. It's like, okay, cool. I didn't get a conversion. I guess I'll move away. Go back to neutral. Try again. What an angle. There's an answer to your question when we were asking before if uh, Tilda goes straight up. Is the drift available? It is. Oh, the laser into forward smash. Interesting call to try to uh, catch an act of over-aggression. Zomba actually looking like... Okay. Very patient on this one. Perhaps even... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you get... I... It was silence for a moment, and you could hear the wet slaps of Falco's feet on the ground as he walked <laughs> back and forth. That was a yeah. tense moment, and it shows that Tilde is not scared of being patient. That Whoop beat out the forward air. Jeez. All right. That was really smart. Kind of recognizing that Tilde was probably going to pick up that gyro, either, you know, on purpose or by accident, and that forward smash was there to actually, you know, go stop. <laughs> yeah, that back air covered the entire platform. I don't think there's a single tech option that didn't get hit there. Not for too much, though, so only going to go for 15% on this next stop. I think we saw a back air come out at the end of that. Maybe he could have survived if he had done, like, an air dodge or even maybe a jump. Maybe. Hard to say. All right. Ooh. The chase on this one. And once again, this is a big thing that Rob has on a lot of characters, being able to swing out of these combos. But when you've got things like Falco's reflector and the lasers, you can't really do that. And I swear, Tilda only went for an option as risky as he did because he knew that platform was there to help him out on the way back. And in the end, trying to actually punish him, to, uh, Zoma put himself on that platform. And, you know, the turnaround happened. Tilda managed to get the stock. Yep, and honestly, went for the option that covered the most things here. Zomba still having the chance to start the offense on the platforms, but overextending a little bit with that Nair, till they falling down, knowing that the threat of the back air was there. Get back to the ground, and then comes up with and it. And you also saw forward air come out. That was probably frames away from connecting, or at the very least trading, but... Speaking of trading, we're going to oh. bring in the robot to bring out the Roy. 
Interesting. Have you seen Zomba's Rally before? I don't think I have. I think maybe I saw him playing it in friendlies no a jump. little bit. But... No jump. Where are you going? Yep. Up, up, up. All right. So we're going to see uh, a bit more of an offensively oriented character. Got the disjoints going for him. Roy, a very strong character in his own right. I'm curious whether Roy will be maybe a little bit more effective at edge guarding. Um, <laughs> I mean... Uh, I think he'll he'll have just as good a footing, if not maybe even a little better at ledge trapping. But I think edge guarding it's very difficult to beat Rob's uh, disjointed options in the down air and the back air. <gasps> okay, oh, man, another one of those up airs. At this point, Zomba is kind of on his last legs, but yep, went for the chase on that one, and that's a smart thing to do when you um, pool noodle it a little bit like that. You can chase, and I love that. No, recognizing that he was. That pressure on the shield was too much for him to get a true punish. Went for the jump side B, I believe, in order to get across the uh, the stage and catch that fade back. In the end, you know, Zomba manages to respond pretty quickly, but this is still a lead for Tilde, and I feel like Tilde eventually is going to figure out these Roy habits, just like he figured out the Rob ones, at which point, oh, Zomba's gonna need to adapt mighty quick. Oh no, see, so we saw Tilde bait out the edge guard on that one. Zamba doing a bit of an early up to try to catch it, and then Tilde was there with the punish. All right. I will say, it felt like Zomba had learned to not overextend on um, uh, Zomba's Rob, and it feels like he's forgotten that lesson against this Roy. So far, he hasn't, you know, hasn't really come back to bite him, but nonetheless, if he goes off stage one too many times, just a little bit too happily, he could die for it. Now, that being said, uh, I think that's probably the only way that... All right, <laughs> oh, went for the... Gonna... Yep, Tilde swinging his way out. Got a big lead on this one, so shouldn't be too afraid to do so. Um, and the thing is, is that Zomba has traded Rob for Roy, a character with one of the best recoveries, to one of the most linear. All right, that is a punish. That... Is that death? That's death. No! Ooh. Okay, good. Roy Ooh. is heavy. This is a rough place to be. Every hit sends you back off stage, and Roy only has so many options. Oh, but a big up air, big damage. It's very possible that Zomba can take this stock right here, especially considering the fact that Tilda already at 113. If he does that, there is, you know, there are ways that, you know, it could be a lead out, but... Oh, yeah, just, just the way. Yeah, just the patience, recognizing at that point the fear had been closing in, and that's going to be a five, four feet, five feet? That's the that's the that's Zeno the five, five feet. feet. Oh, this is that's like era of dominance. I don't think we can contest that in mm -hmm. the least. There it's... there are dynasties that have lasted less time <laughs> than